If you had told me while I was in high school that nearing 30, I would be drinking alone on a Saturday night, fishing bugs out of a large pot in a 600 square foot apartment, stuck at home because everyone else sucks, I think I would have believed you. Welcome back, this is the fifth episode of Slightly Kosher. Tonight we are making matzo ball soup. I'd like to think you're familiar with it in case you're not. It's, um, well, it's soup with matzo balls in it. <laughs> I am very excited. It's really one of my favorites. Um, I love to have it at least once a season. We're gonna have my dad, famously Raj, walk us through the broth. He's very proud of his broth. He makes it twice a year. And we're gonna have my mother-in-law, Linda, who you don't actually know yet, take us through matzo balls. Without further ado, let's make some matzo ball soup. Yay. Things you need for matzo ball soup, one large chicken breast, large onion, cut of garlic, I'll say three stalks of celery, all chopped up, matzo meal, vegetable oil, flavor cubes, chicken stock, leeks, carrots, turnips, parsnips, Italian parsley, dill, a lot of water, a lot of salt and pepper. This is honestly going so well. I guess I should explain Passover. Passover, for those who don't know, which I'm sure we'll get into this more in the spring, when definitely we're not all still stuck inside, um, is a seven night celebration of the freedom of Jews from the Pharaoh, and the matzah. I really did prep this time. And it really is an opportunity to put just about every kind of vegetable you could ever imagine into a pot with some chicken and some matzo meal, and then just essentially marinate it in salt. I'm gonna say that if you have a very low threshold for salt, you should probably turn the video off now. And that feels fine to me because I'm just gonna go ahead and assume that I have a primarily very salty audience. Um, I still don't know how the actual um, evolution of matzah into balls that goes into soup came to be. Does it have to do with the part of the Red Sea? In the meantime, we are working on getting all of our vegetables chopped super thinly, depending on what kind of vegetable it is. Normally, ooh, I make Michael slice the onions. Not today, I'm doing it today. I have already kind of like cut out of bias a bunch of carrots, a bunch meaning four. I did the same thing to parsnips and turnips. I did also learn today, and this is a fun fact about me, that if both a parsnip and a turnip punched me in the face, I wouldn't be able to tell you which one was which. This is not how you cut an onion. But ideally, in order to make your life easier, you'd have done all of this ahead of time, um, and you would have this all ready because, oh, that's only half the onion. Why you can hear me swallowing. <laughs> in a matzo ball soup, you primarily start with a chicken base. That is because you're adding a lot of chicken broth to it. Ideally, you would have made your own chicken broth, but who has the time and energy? We are going to start with his preferred method of double boiling chicken. It's not something I've ever done before, and I am a little dubious to do it. He says that that's important because when you cook the chicken at the bottom and then you add the vegetables that are most like fibrous and most difficult to break down on top of it, then it gives them the opportunity, it's some Belgian um, wives tale, he told, he told himself, I don't know. Prepping vegetables, chicken. I really need to get the chicken in, so let's call Raj and figure that out, and then we can go ahead and start adding liquids to chicken, and then vegetables to liquidy chicken, and... I wrote everything down and I did prepare, but I don't know. At the end of the day, the recipe is just gonna be chicken broth, vegetables broth, Matzo balls, broth, herbs, herbs, herbs. Simmer, serve, eat, I don't know. Okay, once again, I've yet to say anything useful. Ew. It just went to put the raw chicken in the pot and there's, there's a bug in the pot. If you had told me while I was in high school that nearing 30, I would be drinking alone on a Saturday night, fishing bugs out of a large pot, in a 600 square foot apartment, stuck at home because everyone else sucks, I think I would have believed you. Like that's like where I'm at right now. I truthfully think there might be two bugs in there um, and that's all we're gonna say on that. Okay, bugs removed, pot cleaned, gigantic hunk of raw chicken doing its thing. I don't really wanna touch that chicken when it comes out of the pot. 
Ugh, I really do miss Michael. As he was walking out and I was setting up my lights, uh, he was like, but the fans. He thinks he has fans now. I think I'd have flipped that chicken. It has a weird like tip of the iceberg raw part. Like, does this seem okay to you? Yeah, I'm gonna flip that shit. Okay. I only do things the way that actual professionals would do them, so. <laughs> ah! Okay. Okay, that's fine. What I am going to do, as I am so prepared, is I am gonna chop the rest of the onion because that's gonna go in like four seconds before the celery hits. And seeing as I prepared the celery ahead of time, being the incredible employee that I am, is that a slice, would you say? This half moon of onion that I've created? What was I saying about how good I am at my job? I'm actually gonna say that I don't mind the inconsistency here. I'm not being funny, I do think. Um, when you're eating a soup, it is one of the very few um, edible vessels for proper chunk. But if, for instance, you see full rings, like literal onion rings, maybe you've gotten a little too lax. Another reason I'm excited to be making matzo ball soup is because it falls into the genre of dishes that Jews make meant to feed you for a long time. I'm taking this recipe that my dad said is for 10 people, I'm making it for five, and I still feel confident that even though two people live in this house, apartment, <laughs> we don't own anything, that we will have, I'm pretty sure, lunch for a week. I really do love that about Judaism, is the ability to just keep you fed. Next steps. Ew, I did jazz fingers. Wow, okay. So, I have removed, ugh, that doesn't look nice. Though I guess everything I make doesn't look very nice. I have removed the giant steaming hunk of half raw chicken. I'm gonna wait a second so as to truly not kill myself and I'm gonna shred this mother And then I'm gonna put it back in the pot. I don't think you should look at this part. I think it's best if everyone just looks away. Oh, it's so raw. It's so raw. It's like cutting into like, like a meat filled jello mold. Don't look. It still feels like I'm uh, committing a crime. But while you listen with your eyes closed, know that at this point in time, you can take your half raw chicken, you can certainly cut it into little, little cubes, um, little rectangles, whatever your preference is. But mine, again, is that this soup will, oh, I'm gonna have to wash these gloves. A good food video is if you gag halfway through. I think that's really the mark of, of success here. It has just occurred to me that maybe you are all right and that I am disgusting. <laughs> I think I'm okay with it. Oh my God, I'm gonna make Michael clean everything. Okay, we did it. We did it, Joe. At this point, shredded chicken on the verge of being cooked. We're gonna put our sliced onions in first. Um, Raj seemed very adamant about the order that the onions, probably because they're so potent, that in addition to the leeks, which I would think. Whatever, I'm not f***ing with his recipe. Onions first, celery next. I, don't, I get afraid of putting things into boiling water. All I want is to make one Jewish recipe in which I don't need to leave my f***ing perch. Okay, so at this point I have added a bunch of onions. They are nowhere near submerged in liquid. This is my way of telling you that I'm gonna start adding chicken broth, just so that I am fulfilling that particular request from Raj, that the vegetables never, never see the light of day. You have to drown them every time. This is two pounds of chicken stock. That's so many pounds of chicken stock. Eventually, the entire four quarts I have of chicken stock will be gone. We're going to alternate liquid ads between stock and water. I was just gonna give some other helpful hint. You can just stand there and look at me. I feel fine about that. Oh, I remembered. My other helpful hint from Raj was um, not only should all the vegetables we add from here on out be super submerged in water, um, but also that you are not to allow the soup to fall below a simmer at any point. It should not be boiling. Now that the chicken is cooked, it should not be boiling, but it should be simmering all the time. And I, I think he thinks that does something. I'm just gonna sit on the garbage can. I sunk the garbage can. Hard simmer, AKA boil. 
Time for celery, which I would think is the most fibrous vegetable. Oh my God, oh my God. You ever stabbed yourself with tongs before? I have. You don't want to be on camera, right? Uh, not really, no. Okay, so just your voice then. When it goes to the heavy vegetables, the root vegetables, again, you want them to be immersed. Okay. So you want them to, and that's the part that's going to take a little bit longer because they hard as you boil, you want them to soften up. So just kind of keep poking them with tongs and see if they're softened or not? Yeah, but you, you know, you want, no, you let it boil, it's kind of a simple boil, you know what I'm saying? What else do you need now? Remember, once you get the no, waffle. waffle is trying to eat <laughs> What is he trying to eat? Waffle. Oh, Waffle, get your head out of the garbage. I, no, I think he wants, where's the tennis ball? Oh, where's big guy. <laughs> he really loves this tennis, this tennis ball. I don't know why, but he just does. He's a strange bird. In the meantime, I'm adding carrots, Parsnip slash turnips, the interchangeable root vegetables. Woo! This is how big it is. Oh, that's so put one in it, okay? And that's six boil and simmer. It smells like instant ramen. Yeah. I'm finishing the box. So I'm bringing it back up to a simmer, um, which is good. Everything looks chunky. Everything is covered. Lots of pepper now. Yeah, okay. One, two, three, four, five. That's my measure of a lot of pepper. Okay, we've minced two cloves of garlic. We're dropping that in. I was looking at the color, it seemed a little pale, but now with proper lighting, it seems soupier. Is there a correct? word when referring to the color of soup? No, it's watery. Okay. So what it means, you have to put the leaves in and start and put another block, yes. Got it, okay. It doesn't taste bad, it tastes nice, it just tastes overwhelmingly like water. Now what? I mean, I think we're just bringing it to a simmer, yeah. and then we're done yeah. for the night. Okay, I know you saved a baby's life, but how does the soup smell? It smells like the holidays. Just what I wanted to come home to. It's 9.30, you're gonna eat soup? Oh, it smells delicious. I would eat it any time of day. You can smell it through your mask? Yeah, you definitely. The whole apartment smells like the, it smells like the Jewish holidays. Yes, yes, we're recording. Turn your magic on. Do you want to do it right into the mic? Ew, <laughs> Ew, slurping. So good. Definitely done. Vegetables are soft. Broth is salty. Tomorrow morning, we have a lot of work to do. We have to make some f***ing matzo balls. I feel like I really didn't curse so much this episode so far. Let's make some f***ing matzo ball soup. Everyone else f***ing sucks. What that shit. We're wrapping for the night. We are putting the soup on the balcony. Let it just kind of cool, melt together overnight. Then in the morning, we're gonna heat it all up. Just kind of a slow simmer. While we do that, we are going to make the matzo balls, put them in the soup, add the herbs, and eat it. I hope it doesn't take very long. I'm sure you do too. This is probably painful at this point. Anyway, good night. Mm -hmm. Good morning, my fellow rays of sunshine. We are going to make matzo balls. We have the soup simmering. Um, it still, and throughout the night, smelled very much like um, salt in here, which is great, just chicken and salt, which are good smells, um, theoretically. We are making my mother-in-law's matzo ball recipe. I have never attempted it myself. I think we can do this. I think we can do this. We'll find out. In a glass bowl, <laughs> mix eggs, add seltzer, oil, salt, pepper, and matzo. Okay. Combine all ingredients. Great, so that's easy enough. We know how to combine, we know how to crack eggs. Historically, we're very good at that. Um, we are cracking four eggs into this large glass bowl. After eggs comes one cup of matzo meal. She was specific that it should be leveled out so that it's exactly one cup. One level cup of destroyed matzo. Mix 
up the eggs. Am I going to be constipated after eating matzo? That's what it's for. These matzo balls. Are you doing you this? Up. I thought, you, you want me to do it? Yeah, you're better at it. Okay. We talked last night about admitting our strengths and weaknesses. I know my, my shortcomings. Start with oil. Just kind of get it in there. Hold me accountable. One. Careful. Two. Okay. She said that it's not exact. This doesn't work. Okay, this all would have been really helpful before we started. Three. I'm gonna go easy on the fourth because we had some drippings. Four. Great. Amazing. Thriving. Um, I again presume that the existence of the carbonation is what makes it so that the matzo balls are light enough that they don't just like drop like bricks into a soup. Was that three? Yeah. Okay. She said to taste, yeah? Ooh. Okay, I'll allow it because there's... the salt from high up so it spreads out and doesn't clump in one area. Did you rehearse things you think were going to be funny? No, I just know I'm providing helpful tips to the people who may want to learn how to cook monkey balls. You told me to calm down and you're very frantic. Oh. Thank you. Boot pepper. Just trying to give it a cup of oil. Okay, adding my cup of matzo meal. You want the heat up higher? Sure. It is a large vat of soup. How hot is it supposed to be? It's meant to be simmering. Okay, so why don't you get it to a simmer? Okay. We're combining, we're combining. Oh, wait, shh. I was hoping you would be able to hear the um, releasing of the carbonation as I mix this together, but no. We're mixing, we're mixing. We're scraping down sides. Oh, it does smell like matzah. What is matzah? It's unleavened bread due to Jewish oppression a very long time ago. I'm pretty sure that's entirely correct and I don't think we're gonna need a fact check. Hi. Hi. Do you wanna be on camera or do you just wanna talk? No, I'll just talk. Okay, so we're at the point, I was hoping you'd give me a gut check, because I've never done this before, where we've combined all of our matzo ball ingredients. Okay. Does this consistency look to be right to you? Yeah, because it'll get hotter in the refrigerator. It will, I mean, it's not not solid now, it's just kind of a uh, piecey. We're gonna completely cover it. Right. Do, do we know why we do that? So no air gets in. Okay, thank you. So helpful. So this is going in the fridge right now. Um, and I will be sure to send you pictures when it's all said and done, probably in like an hour and a half or so. Oh, I can't wait to see it. All right, well, love okay. you. All right, and we will see you soon. So this actually looks like the beginnings of like a thumbprint cookie dough. That's the first thing I thought of, I don't know why. We have our pot of salted boiling water. Oh, look at that boil. Are you proud of me for boiling water? Is that what it's Woo! As usual, it's going great. Um, no notes from me. We are going to grab ourselves a nice little handful, times 12, stick it in the boiling water, cover that pot real tight, she said no peaking, and it boils for 30 minutes, at which point we can transfer it to the soup. Deep breaths, clear eyes, full hearts, all that. Slightly bigger than a golf ball. Yeah, if you wet your hands, oh, it's it sticks sticky. together so well. Yeah, look at that, that, oh. is, that is a ball. One, two, three. That's what the sound of a matzo ball is going on. That's true. Like, That's what the Jews said as they were leaving Egypt. <laughs> Whee! Okay. That don't put that, that in. Yeah. Nice. They will kind of inflate themselves as they um, absorb water. I will say their color changes immediately as they hit the water. They do turn pretty matzo ball colored pretty quickly. Oh, matzo smells like, I don't say dry corn flakes, but that's not quite it. All right, 10, in we go. 
They look amazing. I look amazing? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so 30 minutes has passed. Oh my God. Look at those babies. Fish one out. That looks like a moth's ball. They should all be mostly submerged in the liquid. We have by this point added the second of those two boxes of broth. So there's four pounds of chicken broth in here right now. Parsley, dill, gentle mix. Oh yeah, that really smells like Passover now. Alexa, set a timer for 10 minutes. Now we wait. A cool 18 hours later, and we are done with our matzo ball soup. We have successfully made matzo balls. I haven't yet tried a bite, but they look exactly as matzo balls are meant to look, which is so exciting. I really, I don't get excited very often, but this is, this feels kind of special. Um, my dad's broth and my mother-in-law's bolts. I'm so excited to try, though I suspect I know exactly how it tastes. Oh my God, it's perfect. It's so good. That really just tastes like something you could get from like a Second Avenue deli. It's very, very savory. It is the perfect amount of salt. I will be thirsty as predicted, which means I've done it right. You've got a variety of textures here. You've got these gigantic chunks of carrots, turnips, parsnips, such a nice amount of herbs. I mean, the onions have practically just become one with the broth itself, which is so fun because who doesn't love a liquidy onion? Could be the greatest tasting soup of all time. That's a little dramatic, no? Uh, I don't think so. It tastes like your mom? I, well, I think the combination of your dad's soup and my mom's matzo ball may be a million dollar idea and we shouldn't release the episode because... You think so? I think so. You think this is how we'll make our money? Yeah, but you, you just put it in the supermarket fridge, uh -huh. retire. I like that for us. I hope for once this was informative and less messy and that you were able to follow along. And if not, I do apologize, but also I feel confidence in you. What do I normally say? Every time I do this. This is slightly kosher. This is slightly kosher. Matzo ball soup edition. Matzo ball soup edition.